to Hi everyone, Pat Doherty with today's topic for Tennis IQ. We're looking at offensive versus defensive versions of the ground stroke. We're going to focus on the offense for now. When we're talking about fundamentals, we're talking about the common threads we can find in all great examples of a particular thing, like a, a forehand, for example, here. What do we see the same at certain points of the stroke? That's what we're going to identify as the fundamentals that are important as students of the game to focus on. All the elements that make them look a little bit different in other aspects, we'll classify that as style. What you can see stand out right away is that not only are they making the effort to try to get their hitting hand out behind the ball flight and beneath the intended height of contact, but the butt of the racket is also presenting itself driving towards the contact point. That's an essential part of generating power with this tool called a tennis racket. So we want it aligned properly because the alignment, much like the hammer and the nail, makes a big difference. So if I'm striking directly down on the nail, I'm going to get the best functionality out of this hammer. If I'm coming in sideways, no matter how big it is, I'm going to wind up bending the nail and not getting it down into the wood. Same applies here with the stroke to ball flight alignment as we talked about in another presentation. It's important that we align that properly so that we don't wind up sideways nailing the nail and wind up with a big slap through contact that happens to players that do that. So this is an important fundamental feature to focus on in your forehand is to get that hand out behind the ball and make sure your grip pressure is relaxed enough and the wrist is passive enough so that you're not trying to manipulate the racket head with the wrist. You're just relaxed and letting it lay back. So we achieve this 90 degree angle you see here. Notice in this forcing conditions, I'll, I'll say that he's wrong footed and I'll explain that in a second. But notice Dimitrov's effort here is to get this racket handle out behind the ball flight. We can see the shadow of the ball there. He's cleared the left arm out of the way to open up the cross court option and to maintain at least upper body balance in this challenging scenario. Now the backswing refers to the position of the take back of the racket. Nothing fancy about that. We want it out there behind the ball. But the racket preparation involves correctness and timing. We want it early and correct and the reason for that is, is racket preparation determines how the natural footwork process will set up. They're not thinking about their feet on the fly when they're playing. It's the racket preparation reaching out like we saw Dimitrov do that would trigger the right foot to want to try to get out underneath the handle. They work together in that respect. So when I go back to this, you can see his right foot's back here. It really wants to be out underneath this handle, but because of the situation of being forced, he's unable to set that up in time. So for the racket preparation, we want to see the handle of the racket out in front of the ball, leading the way to the ball flight, body trailing. For many kids, they've got that racket trailing behind their body from this angle. And that, may, that kind of messes with the natural footwork process and sets them up to throw their speed out to get to the ball and causing a slap through contact with the racket head. All things done early and correctly, you should wind up right hand over right foot, right hand over right foot, and they're both setting up open with the option to step in to neutral or transfer across to reach a ball that's out of reach. At this stage, at the beginning of the forward, what I would say is a pulling action. Again, the grip pressure is probably, if we're talking one being very, very loose, 10 being tight, 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 they're probably closer to the three to four area of grip pressure. They're down towards the looser end. Wrist is relaxed. Again, they want to achieve this 90 degree angle on the way to the ball. And if you're aligned properly and keeping the wrist passive at contact, ideally we want to have that relationship where the hand is back as far as it can go. You don't have to squeeze hard to get good support because this wrist is providing the support of leverage at contact. We see it here in the Federer forehand. So anytime it's possible to keep this 90 degree angle intact, they're choosing to do that. At times it will break down. We don't always have time to get set up perfectly on the tennis court. Notice in an unforced condition, Djokovic is loading both hands on the ball flight. The left arm's opening up, 
and it works until the shoulders get parallel to the baseline, then it's pretty much done, and it's brought the shoulder blades together, brought the pecs into play, and incre increased the amount of force he can create in terms of power. And again, in this example, we will see it's an offensive version of the stroke because the butt end will present itself driving towards the contact point right there. So that means we're optimizing it. It's like saying that the hammer isn't going back far enough. That's why we're not getting much from the result. We got to get back to here where the butt end can see the nail to get full utilization out of this tool. Here in the uh, Federer forehand, same kind of loading process. The left arm is both hands on line with the ball flight. Then the left arm opens up the chest till parallel to the baseline. And then through contact, the finish may take them beyond parallel with the chest. Quite often you'll see Djokovic start with his chest facing this direction, and at the end it's a full 180, he's facing the other direction. So there's a lot of rotation going on there. The other value of this left arm working is that the harder you work this thing, the better it's going to want to bring that right foot around and facilitate a built-in recovery uh, as part of the follow-through of the stroke. Here we see Rafa. Same loading process, the left hand across the chest, again, unforced conditions. Left uh, opposite arms working well. Butt ends driving there. So these are all forehands that are offensive applications. So at times, we choose to trim out the butt end preparation, shorten up the backswing in order to make sure we time, time it right and we're using more of a half volley technique to utilize the power of the incoming shot to redirect it back at the opponent. So anytime you're looking to create power with a tennis racket, no matter what the stroke, the butt end needs to see the contact point along the way. So we see it on the serve, the overhead, the slice, the two-hander, the one-hander, the forehand, the slice again. Here we got a backhand overhead, he's here. Okay, so he's showing the butt end to the contact point. He's going to come up over the top of that. Murray's hitting a, a, a high volley there that's kind of a floater. So he's starting in the direction, not going all the way to there because he's not hitting a backhand overhead, but he's starting in the direction where the butt end's going to almost see contact so they can go back to flat, put a little action to the head of the racket to, to pop that volley away. So keep that in mind, it's an important reference point to understand. The universal principle in any, any tool sport, beyond tennis even, is that at some point the butt end's gotta be driving at contact. Take this time to work on your forehand. Work on your top spin too, guys. You, all these guys are finishing with a nice windshield wiper effect. Juniors tend to not like to work on top spin because they see a, a drop in the power of their shots. Well, that means you haven't figured it out right. A good forehand volley, or a good forehand heavy ball, the hand stays on the same line it would to hit flat, except the racket head's set differently to create that effect. Now people saw that head do this big S shape and they think, oh, the stroke needs to do that. And that's why they lose po uh, power trying to generate their topspin. You still need the power element to stay intact. My hand started at hip level, finished at hip level. It was a straight line in this swing. So all the action came out of the head to create that spin. It's a technique you have to work hard at to develop. Spend this time on your forehand. Make it better than it was, and I hope to see you guys soon.